Welcome to Motivate You, the Winner Circle here, your host, June Archer. And today I have a guest who is doing some amazing things in Newark. Uh, he is a real estate attorney, developer, and someone who is trying to change the world around him. To talk about this project called Savers Village, please welcome to the show, Daryl Scipio. Daryl, welcome to the show. How are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Thank you very much, Mr. Archer. I appreciate it. Uh, when I got the uh, word and email about this project, uh, I said, wow, you know, this guy is doing some some great things, lofty goals. Uh, I want to ask you, man, um, how long have you been doing um, real estate uh, in terms of being on the attorney side? I've been a real estate attorney for about four or five years now. And uh, I also sit on the planning board in my town. So I've seen, I've worked with a lot of investors, developers, and home buyers and home sellers, and I've seen a lot of transactions. So I have, you know, a decent amount of experience in the field. Now, when we talk about housing boards and, and committees, how important is it now more than ever that people of color, black folks, start to find themselves in positions to have a seat at the table, to have their voice heard? You're sitting on the board, but how, is it, how important is it for others to kind of make sure that they actually pull up a chair and have a seat. It's critical, you know, in, in my town, um, you know, I come, I live in a town that is 90% black, East Orange, New Jersey. And, you know, ever since I could remember, we've always had a black mayor. And uh, I've grown up seeing that representation uh, of people that look like me making decisions uh, for the people that live in their neighborhoods that affect their lives. So it's, you know, it's, it's kind of ingrained in my, in how I think and how I see the world. And it's super important to have a seat at the table um, because the people that live in the community should be the ones that make the policy. Now with this Savers Village that you have, I want you to explain a little bit for those who haven't been familiar with it. Uh, I had the opportunity and the privilege to, to read about it, but specifically, what is the goal? What is Savers Village and what is the goal? Savers Village is a real estate development. We are um, going to build a 39 unit apartment building. Tenants are going to move in every month. They're going to put 10 percent of their rent towards savings. Legally, they can do whatever they want with those savings. But over time, it will accumulate into enough money for them to put a down payment on a home and have closing costs to buy their first, their first home. So the target group of renters for this building are people that want to be homeowners that are currently renting, but have always wanted to be homeowners, but could never um, save up for a down payment or didn't have the credit um, so while they're living at Savers Village, we'll be helping to provide credit repair services through a third party, financial literacy, and first time home buying education for all the tenants while they're there. Now, explain to me, because I think there's a misconception about affordable housing, how that's divvied up. You are doing it. You're, you're adding an element of education, financial responsibility financial literacy, planning, et cetera. But for those who are unfamiliar with affordable housing as it has been rolled out to us for many, many years, uh, how are you making this possible for them? And, and what is the misconception behind uh, the traditional term of affordable housing? So this is a, you know, this is a private project and um, so we can set the terms of how we want to interact with our tenants. So there will be um, portions of affordable housing uh, programs in our uh, in what we offer. Um, you know, for example, in order to um, in order to have the money to build the project, you know, we're probably going to need some sort of uh, subsidy from HUD or 
um, some some sort of uh, tax credit that's available. And in order to, to use that money, then a portion of those units have to be what's quote unquote affordable. Now, affordable is set by a guideline that's based on the average monthly income of the neighborhood. So when, when people make a certain percentage under that average monthly income, then they qualify for what's called affordable housing. And uh, the rent that's under the affordable housing umbrella is set by someone else. It's not set by me, it's set by someone in Washington. And it mm -hmm. just says, this is the most that you can charge for rent. Um, and so, you know, depending on the type of funding that we acquire, we will have to abide by affordable housing guidelines um, for some of the units. Now we're building this project in Newark and the city of Newark has set its own affordable housing guidelines and they're allowed to do that. And what they said, if they said, if there's an apartment building with over 29 units, then 20% of those units must be affordable. Okay. So, um, that's another layer of housing affordability that we'll have to contend with. And when I say we'll have to contend with, it's, I shouldn't use that word because we want people to be able to afford to live um, and still, you know, pay their bills and save up and, you know, uh, do everything that they need to do. You know, I always say that before we talk about affordable housing, we have to talk about affordable wages. We have to talk about there being a national $15 minimum wage in America that guarantees a living income for the entire country. Now you're gonna have portions of the country where you, know, you need $21 an hour or $22 an hour as a living wage. But right now, I think the federal minimum wage is seven dollars and some change. So obviously, that's that's completely unacceptable in 2021. So we need to have that conversation. And you know, once we get people affordable wages, then that changes the affordable housing conversation. What was the inspiration behind Savers Village to to even get to this point? I know it takes a lot lot of planning. Uh, zoning boards, boards, uh, just a financial piece pulling in. Uh, you just mentioned financial planning, financial literacy. So you're bringing on a board bank, financial people that can help getting these people in the right frame of mind moving forward so that it, they can sustain what it is that they're, they're working towards. Uh, for you, what was the inspiration behind Savers Village? Uh, we're doing this project in Newark, New Jersey. About Newark, um, but it is um, it's a place um, that's on the rise. You know, there's uh, seventy five percent of the folks that live in Newark are renters. You know, it's the largest mm -hmm. city in New Jersey, and only twenty five percent of the population owns their home. And you know, New Jersey is is a state that has you know the largest you know the greatest property taxes, you know, probably in the country. Um, and so Newark um, could really benefit from there being a lot more homeowners and the residents could also benefit from being homeowners. You know, we know that home ownership is the foundation and has been the foundation for generational wealth in the black community. And during the mortgage crisis in 2008 and 2009, uh, Black Americans lost collectively 40% of the wealth that we were starting to build through home ownership when all of the people that had those subprime mortgages um, defaulted and were foreclosed on. So um, we need to build up that foundation again. So we need to start to create homeowners in Black communities at a, um, at a much faster pace. And we need to direct our efforts towards doing that very clearly. So this is just, um, this is just you know, my way 
of, of you know, contributing to the, the needs of our community. Across the country, I've been seeing a sweep of developers coming in to gentrify the inner cities. Uh, new work is on the rise, as you say. A lot of great things happening there. Is this a way to combat the, the so-called gentrification that you can keep people that live there that are part of the com community in the community? Um, I don't, it can be seen that way, you know, because we want folks that live in the community to benefit from this from this entity and eventually to become homeowners. Um, as you know, gentrification is when folks uh, come into a neighborhood, buy up all the property, and then start to affect um, that neighborhood's policy. Um, so when we have more, uh, you know, more folks that are from there as owners, then it's harder to gentrify a neighborhood like that. So yeah. Newark is known for, uh, at least for me, uh, hip hop is very prevalent out there. We have so many amazing people. Do it all from Lords of the Underground, Tretch from Naughty by Nature, uh, La Tifa, Rod Digger, Redman. Are you getting any support from notables like them or any others who are, are from Newark? I know that Bill Bellamy is from there as well. Are you getting any support from some of the local people who have uh, the opportunity to help make this successful far beyond what you believe it can be? Um, we would love that. You know, I think as of now, they don't know about our project, but hopefully as we spread the word, then they will learn about it and, you know, we'll have an opportunity to speak with them about it and to share the opportunity so that um, they can decide if it's something that they that they want to to invest in. But so far, everyone that's um, heard about it has said this is a great idea, a great project. You know, um, some folks have said, "How can I help?" Some folks have said, "Good luck." Um, <laughs> and you know, so far, these just these just haven't been celeb. We just haven't you know uh, interacted with with celebrities yet. And nothing comes without you know hesitation, roadblocks. What have been some of the roadblocks that have gotten in a way that you've had to kind of endure and put behind you, try to jump over, get around, get under, uh, that may not have been in the plan, but it seems as though you're, you're very headstrong on getting this done, but have there been any roadblocks? Uh, and if there have been, how have you been able to navigate those? The the biggest challenge that we face so far is raising the capital for the project. And um, we've had that issue uh, because um, it's a very unorthodox project. So norm, normal real estate investors, you know, they're trying to 10X their money on a project. But this is a project that's for folks that wanna do well financially, but also still do good, um, you know, meaning do good for others. And so because we're giving tenants 10% uh, of their rent, you know, that's going to cut into 10% of the profits for the developers right. and the investors. Right. So um, that's a challenge for, for some investors. And that's a challenge for, you know, the, the usual investor class. So we're targeting social impact investors, folks that, that want their money to go to a good social cause, and they're still gonna get a great return on their money. You know, it just may not be as much as if you know, we were collecting that 10% um, from the tenant. So, 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 so let me ask you this, Daryl. Do you find that uh, lenders are hesitant? Um, there aren't a lot of black developers out there. There's not a lot of black and brown faces that are sitting on these zoning boards and on these boards. Do you find that the lenders are hesitant to to want to give and contribute to projects like this because of because of the neighborhoods, because of the 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 population of individuals that make up the, that particular area? 
certain lenders are. Okay. Um, but they're, you know, we're, we've, you know, lately been talking to a lot of, to, uh, to a few lenders that are looking for projects like ours. You know, um, I think that the climate that we're in, um, you know, having just, um, you know, voted out you know, a president that, uh, you know, endorsed white nationalism and white supremacy, um, you know, you've had the response to that and, you know, and also, you know, Charlottesville and, you know, Breonna Taylor and George Floyd, there's, there actually has been a response to that, you know, from the corporate community that said, you know, we've, you know, benefited from, you know, the, the labor of black people. Um, we've benefited from, you know, keeping them in certain communities, redlining them, not, not giving them loans. Um, and so we want to, we want to do something about that. We want to change that that paradigm. So you're seeing, you know, corporations create one hundred million dollar funds, you know, to in, invest in uh, in black tech initiatives and real estate initiatives. Um, so the climate that we're in has created a lane for projects like ours um, to to find, you know, specific monies that are going to help benefit, uh, you know. Black people, black developers, black business folks, and this is this is something that we haven't seen in in my lifetime, um, and so I think that we're particularly poised and in a great position uh, to take advantage uh, of some of that opportunity. And when do you see this project being complete? So you know, our timeline is for us to um, acquire the the funding. Um, and all of the city approvals um, by June, and then start building in July and finish construction by the end of 2022. So we hope to um, open our doors in January 2023. Nice, nice, nice. Where can we find out about this project and how can those who are watching or listening support it? The, um, there's a, we actually have a crowdfund uh, on a website called smallchange.co and it's for it's it's a regu it's a it's a reg cf um, which is you know regulated by the SEC and it allows for investors to invest for as little as $1000 up to $5 million in this project and anyone listening can go to smallchange.co and look up Savers Village and you'll see my face. And you can go right there and invest and, and make this project a reality. You heard it here, Daryl Scipio, Savers Village, Newark, New Jersey, making some changes, bringing some good to the community and giving ownership to the community so that they have something to hold on to. Daryl, thank you so much for joining the show. I appreciate you for sharing this project with us. We'll be out here supporting you. We'll be spreading the word and we look forward to opening those doors. 2023, please send me an invite. I'd love to be there for the ribbon cutting, uh, whatever the celebration is. And we're going to make sure I'm going to call do it all. I'm going to have him reach out to Tretch from Naughty by Nature and Vin Rock and Red Man and, and all of his friends, Bill Bellamy. And we're going to be there to support. And hopefully this Savers Village won't be the last one being built in Newark, New Jersey. Thank you so much. This is June Archer from Motivate You, the Winner Circle. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure you tell someone that you love them. It may be the last time you have the opportunity to do so. Keep it locked here. Like it, love it, subscribe. Y'all be good to each other. Peace. Thank you.